Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father and from our King, Jesus Christ. Amen. Turn our attention to today's epistle where Paul wrote, Indeed, let this attitude be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Though he was by nature God, He did not consider equality with God as a prize to be displayed, but emptied himself. He humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Dear Christian friends, for whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Jesus spoke those words two days after Palm Sunday, on the Tuesday of Holy Week, as he was teaching in the courts of the temple. The temple rulers took personal umbrage at Jesus speaking these words. They assumed Jesus was attacking them, and in part, he was. But at the very same time, the meek and the weak found comfort and reassurance in the very same words. Yet very few assumed that when Jesus spoke that sentence that he could possibly also be referring to himself. And yet later, the Apostle Paul in our epistle lesson shows us that these words do apply to Jesus. Jesus humbled himself, and God the Father exalted him. Paul tells us to imitate this attitude. Jesus did it first, and because he did, we can follow in his footsteps all the way to exaltation. On Palm Sunday, Jesus received a small exaltation before he plunged to the depths of woe. But without those depths, he would not now be exalted to the right hand of glory. And without following Jesus through much tribulation ourselves in this veil of tears, we will never be exalted. For whoever exalts himself will be humbled. But whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Jesus humbled himself and was exalted so that we, humbly believing in him, might be exalted too. For five weeks in a row now, especially in our Wednesday night services, we have been focusing on the humility of Jesus, how Jesus humbled himself for us. But today, as we enter this Holy Week, we join the Palm Sunday crowds in welcoming him into Jerusalem. Ride on, ride on in majesty. In lowly pomp, ride on to die. Bow thy meek head to mortal pain. Then take, O Christ, thy power and reign. Philippians 2, 5 to 11 is also a hymn, an early Christian hymn that God caused St. Paul by inspiration to include in this epistle. In these words are profound truths about just who Christ is and what he did. Indeed, let this attitude be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, though he was by nature God. He did not consider equality with God as a prize to be displayed, but emptied himself, taking on the very nature of a servant. Jesus is the almighty God. We confess in the Nicene Creed that he is very God, a very God, begot, not made, of one substance with the Father, By him, by Jesus, all things were made. And in so saying, we echo the words of John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. 
the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. And yet even though Jesus is true God, the second person of the Holy Trinity, yet he gave up his glory at his Father's side. He emptied himself, Paul says. That is, he gave up the full use of his divine powers and attributes. That's why, for example, Jesus could say, no one knows the day or the hour, not the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. That's why even though Jesus is true God, he could weep, thirst, hunger, and sleep. That's why Jesus could bleed and die. When he was born in human likeness and his appearance was like that of any other man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death. Jesus was conceived and born of a human mother. He was tempted by Satan. He endured slander and abuse. He was hated. He was mocked. He suffered. He died. And he was buried. He had a choice. And he chose to do this. He did so willingly. He humbled himself, Paul says, he was truly and fully God, which he demonstrated on so many occasions in the miracles he did, or in his glorification on the Mount of Transfiguration, and even when he was arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane. And he spoke a word, and those who came to trap him fell over like dead men at the sound of his voice. So why did Jesus then choose this for himself. Purely out of mercy and love, he could see us swirling to the bottom in the lake of fire, crying out in agony, and he says, this red line will not be crossed, and Jesus intervened. And the only way he could intervene was himself to come down to earth from heaven, clothed in human flesh. The only way he could rescue us from death was to put aside the use of his divine immortality. And so when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law. No ordinary death would do either. Being nailed to the cross, Jesus died the death of the lowest of slaves. When he was born in human likeness and his appearance was like that of any other man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Would a general take off his stars his insignia of rank? Would he take the medals off his chest and put on the fatigues of a foot soldier and crawl through the mud together with his men and feel the, the sweat and blood on his face and die the death of his men? Some might, some have, but would they do it in place of the enemy's foot soldiers? That's what Christ did. As St. Paul wrote, for if when we were God's enemies we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more having been reconciled shall we be saved through his life. For me, a sinner deserving damnation, God humbles himself and dies. This is the truth highlighted by Jesus' unusual entry into Jerusalem. Not on a war horse, but on a colt, the foal of a donkey. 
this is the deep truth of Good Friday, the truth that brought Paul to poetry. Though he was by nature God, he did not consider equality with God as a prize to be displayed, but he emptied himself. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Though Jesus entered Jerusalem in lowly pomp on a donkey, and though he was ignored by the leaders of Jerusalem, nevertheless, he did not refuse to allow the children to call him king. As they called out, Hosanna to the son of David, the crowds greeted him with palms in their hands and knowingly or not proclaimed a profound truth. Through his humiliation and death, Jesus earned for himself the right to be called king not only by people, but by God the Father himself. Paul continues, Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. As we remember that Jesus Christ, who humbled himself and who suffered and died, was God himself, Paul reminds us of the flip side, namely that Jesus Christ, who is at the right hand of God the Father, is really true man. Jesus is God, and Jesus is our brother. Our brother sits at the right hand of God. Our big brother rules everything for us for whom he suffered. And he does so for the sole and single purpose of saving souls. Our brother is God. Our big brother runs the world. Wars and armies, kings and presidents, even earthquakes and floods are all orchestrated together for that single-minded purpose of bringing God's elect into their home above. God gave him the name that is above every name. What is it that makes the name of Jesus so great? Jehovah saves, Jesus means. What makes his name so great is precisely that he humbled himself to save us. Before he began to suffer, Monday Thursday night, Jesus prayed, Father, the time has come. Glorify your son. God exalted Jesus because he lowered himself to death. And that is also why we worship and praise him. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name. So that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. Not everyone knows or bows to Jesus yet. In heaven... The angels stand in awe before his throne and offer him reverent praise. When Jesus walked on the earth, even the demons acknowledged him here and trembled. But on earth, so many people still refuse to acknowledge him in faith as Savior and Lord. Those under the earth, those souls which have gone to hell to await the end of all things because they refuse to bow before Jesus in this life, will bow the knee before Jesus on Judgment Day. Those on earth who refuse to bow before him now will have their hearts give out in terror at Christ's return, and they too 
will bow the knee and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. When he comes in judgment, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. Our celebration of Palm Sunday is our declaration that we will not foolishly wait until judgment day to acknowledge and worship him as king. We, the church, are here to call on him as our redeemer and to confess him in faith as our Lord to the glory of God the Father, even though our praises are but a faint echo of the exaltation we will give him above. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. It was through his humiliation and suffering that Jesus was exalted. His lowest moment, his death, is the source of his glory. It is his death for which we praise him most. In view of what Christ has done for us, Paul urges us to humble ourselves like Christ. Let this attitude be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Let us humble ourselves to confess our sins and to gladly hear again the holy story of Christ's passion, death, and resurrection this holy week. Let us join the children in calling out to Jesus, Hosanna, Lord, save us. Let us bow the knee before him and confess that he is our Savior on Maundy Thursday and on Easter by partaking of his body and blood. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Let this attitude be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Amen.